Alrighty, welcome to our final episode of Mosquito Bites Live this week in honor of National Mosquito Week. Uh, today I'm very excited that we'll be joined uh, very shortly by Orange County Mosquito and Vector Control. Um, but again, I want to give a shout out to everyone, uh, not only for those of you who have been viewing us uh, this entire week, but also uh, people we have invited uh, to Mosquito Bites Live. Once again, uh, huge thank you to Andy Lima, aka MC Bugsy, with those awesome uh, sounds you gave us a live version of. Um, Michael from uh, 305 Mosquito in Florida. Uh, Nicole from uh, Puerto Rico Vector Control. A great conversation we had in Spanish. Uh, again, all of these videos will be available on our, or are available, I should say, on our Instagram feed. So be sure to check those out if you haven't seen them. And uh, make sure uh, you also check out the other stuff we've been sharing along for a National Mosquito Week. And be sure to check out our new friend Ada, who has officially made her grand entrance uh, this, uh, this week with her brand new look. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring on Orange County Vector Control right here and about some great mosquito facts. Uh, so Orange County, we should be connecting in just a few short seconds. Hi, Heather. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. How about yourself? I am doing great. It's a good day today to be here. And uh, thank you so much for uh, having us on today. Well, thank you so much for joining us uh, for our last uh, episode of Mosquito Bites Live in honor of National Mosquito Week this week. We know you guys have been super busy uh, uh, doing your, your part in your campaign on your end and, and us here as well. Um, Heather, do you want to give a little information about yourself, uh, where you're coming from, and a little bit about Orange County Vector Control? Yeah, of course. My name is Heather Highland. I am the public information officer for Orange County Mosquito and Vector Control District. Um, I actually came from Greater LA Vector Control. And uh, before that, loved working with bugs, the LA Zoo. And uh, I am a true bug lover at heart. So Orange County Mosquito Control actually covers 32 cities in Orange County. Uh, we've been serving the public since 1947. And we continue to really encourage people to watch out for their public health and safety when it comes to vectors and vector-borne illnesses. Definitely. And I think a great thing to point out as well is us as the San Diego Valley Mosquito and Vector Control District, we are in Los Angeles County and work hand-in-hand uh, -hand with our other vector control agencies of Los Angeles County, like Greater LA, like you mentioned. Uh, but you in Orange County, you uh, manage all of Orange County. And I think it's important to note that even though we are different districts, we still work very closely together, hand-in-hand, -hand, and our mission remains the same in protecting the public uh, from vector-borne diseases. Yes, of course. And, you know, mosquitoes don't have borders. They don't say, oh, this is where Greater LA is. This is where San Gabriel is. This is Orange County. All of our borders actually run up right against each other. So I know we've done a lot of different collaborations and we're going to do more in the future. So, yeah, definitely. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with our okay. conversation today. Uh, today, we're kind of covering facts fun facts or information about uh, mosquitoes, uh, which leads me to my first question is, what are some common misconceptions uh, about mosquito repellents? I know people use all kinds of things. I have some here, uh, the sprays and different types of active ingredients when it comes to mosquito repellents. Uh, we give out these wipes uh, as well. Do you wanna give us some information in regards to these, Heather? Oh, sure, thank you. Oh, here. thank you. <laughs> Um, you know, I love these wipes. We actually have the same wipes as you. This is natural repel. I think the misconception of um, repellents is the ingredients. I think everyone throughout the years always thinks DEET, DEET. That huge word DEET and oh, it smells bad and oh, it's oily and it doesn't feel good. Um, DEET does work if it's a, over 20%, but there are other options for people. I'm a little bit more natural. I like to go hiking a lot. So I use oil of lemon eucalyptus and I encourage people to try that out. It works for me. I actually spray it on my clothes too uh, to prevent 80s from biting. Um, these wipes work really well. They're very convenient. Um, this one, it's a little backwards, but <laughs> this one actually has um, picaridin in it. 
And that's a plant-based ingredient. So there's so many things, IR 3535, oil of lemon eucalyptus, you can have the keratin. Um, there's so many different options for you. Um, I know on all of our sites, we have some um, information about the ingredients that are EPA registered. So um, I highly suggest the wipes though, because I can just put them in my fanny pack when I go hiking. Definitely. And I think that's really important for people to know uh, when it comes to mosquito repellent, making sure you have one of those four active ingredients, whether it be yeah. oil, lemon, eucalyptus, percaritin, or I think eight is a big fan uh, of those active ingredients. Uh, uh, IR3535, making sure you have one of those active ingredients is super important uh, because that actually leads me to my next question, which is some uh, common misconceptions of things that do work such as I know one very popular one are those mosquito bracelets uh, that people uh, like to use or the citronella candles. Do you want to give us some information in regards to that, Heather? Yeah, well, you know, I saw Ada saying thumbs up. Well, guess what, Ada? I'm coming for you. I got repellent. You can't <laughs> bite me. <laughs> so I think one of the misconceptions, I know a lot of people, I have a lot of moms, I'm a mom myself, ask me like, Heather, what should I use? Um, outside in a barbecue, I always use those bracelets. And unfortunately, um, I, I have to kind of let them down right on their parade and say they don't always work, specifically because you only have that around your wrist. The rest of your body is exposed. Your CO2 is coming out and they can bite anywhere else besides that area. So it's always good to use repellent on exposed skin. Um, I think people say, oh, lavender works and the dryer sheets. Um, what I've seen now, because I, I keep looking up different um, things that are kind of going viral on TikTok and, and, you know, other things like that. And there's stickers now. There's repellent stickers that I'm seeing. And I'm just, I'm just saying no, because if you just put the sticker on one part of your body, just like the bracelets, it's not going to protect the rest of your exposed skin. Right. So I think I applaud people. I know they want to do a more natural approach with the essential oils, but not all of them work. If you use EPA registered, that means that there has been research done on these um, ingredients. There's been arm tests done. So they are a reliable repellent that is going to protect you from mosquito bites. Exactly. And I think that's something really important that you touched base on is I know I've gotten a lot of questions about uh, the bracelets. Uh, a friend of mine was traveling to Nicaragua and asked me, like, oh, I got the, the bracelets. I know I'm good. And yeah. he said I had a rain on her parade and to like, no, I'm so sorry. You literally have to cover your entire self with that bracelet in order for you it, to protect yourself. And like you said, the dryer sheets and these are all things uh, that hopefully will work, but they unfortunately don't have uh, the long lasting effect that mosquito repellent works. Yeah. I always like to say mosquito repellent is just like sunscreen. You got to follow the label and reapply as need be. And also the, these active ingredients have been tested time and time again. And there's a lot of research behind them and backing them up in their effectiveness and how um, they do really protect ourselves versus some of these things like stickers. They, they're a company and some of them can say whatever they want and they aren't necessarily tested or proven like these active ingredients that do protect ourselves for a, a long time. So it's really important um, that we pay attention to those, especially as consumers and when it comes to uh, protecting our, our own health that way. Exactly. Um, so that leads me to my next question is, we have a uh, repellent that we can use. We have uh, the misconceptions of what not necessarily to use or what's not recommended to use. Um, what are some of the best things that we can do other than uh, using uh, mosquito repellent when it comes to protecting ourselves from mosquitoes? Well, you know, I tell a lot of people, our campaign is almost the same. All the sister agency are saying tip, toss, take action or tip, toss, protect. So, the main thing, hey, I see that saucer. <laughs> <laughs> Tip it out, Ada. <laughs> uh, so I would say you have to tip standing water. And it could even be, I actually, I'm guilty of it. I actually found a pot that my mother gave me that didn't have a hole in it. And I was wondering why we were getting bit on our deck because I'm pretty um, cautious about all of our plants. This had filled up to the brim and just the water was in the pot and hundreds of larvae, hundreds. So even that little puddle of water on top of dirt can actually be a breeding source. 
even the tiniest cryptic sources, I think, is what people need to look for. So tip all that water out. Um, Ada, I know you lay eggs around man-made containers. So toss them out, get rid of them so they don't hatch. I mean, 80s eggs can stay viable for years. So if you have that pot out there dry, but then rain comes and the water hits the eggs, they have the potential to, to hatch. So tip out standing water, toss out unused containers, take action. You can wear repellent, but another way to take action is I always tell my neighbors, hey, hey, over there, hey, hey Joan, I see that pot. You might want to tip it over. I care about your health. Um, my dad uses, I see this all the time, a Home Depot bucket. Those Home Depot buckets, everyone fills them with water for their dog. And my like, dogs don't need that much water. <laughs> so tip that out and just turn it over. Um, kitty pools, all those little things that I think people don't think about can become cryptic sources for mosquitoes to lay eggs in. Um, one of my big things is I, a lot of people say it's summer, I don't wear long sleeves or long pants. But when I go hiking, to protect yourself from a lot of different things, I wear long sleeve, long sleeve clothing to prevent you know ticks from from gathering around my ankles, any kind of biting bug, um, rattlesnakes. So, <laughs> um, one of our our big things is maintain your drain. Look at your drains. I would say eighty percent of the time I look at someone's yard, it's a drain right. that is breeding, and they have no idea. So always look at your drains, your gutters, look at those things that could hold water that you don't really look at daily. Right. And I think that's really important information, especially what we always like to say as well is removing those uh, sources or anything collecting water once a week. Uh, we always like to say, you know, we all throw our, put our trash out in the curb once a week, doing, taking that time, just a quick little scan of your yard. Cause I know, like you said, I've been guilty too. Of I have found uh, bags that have collected water after the rain or yeah. even a cycle bin that wasn't covered, collected water. Those are all big sources. And especially like you mentioned, uh, kiddie pools, especially right now as we enter warmer months and as people are at home or uh, right now, um, a lot of things like kids' toys and all that stuff that we kind of just leave laying around in our yard. If they collect water and we leave it there for a week, um, mm -hmm easily going to uh, turn into a home for a mosquito and that can easily start breeding eggs <laughs> just like uh, what Ada would lay any anything like that uh, is really important to say, to stay on top of and making sure that we're eliminating those types of sources. Oh definitely and I think one um, video we are thinking about producing is looking at um, internal sources so looking at the inside of your house and I don't think we um, I don't think we talk about that a lot, but I have seen when I have gone into houses before, um, I saw uh, a guinea pig uh, kind of station, a guinea pig uh, housing unit, and the guinea pig's water dish had larvae in it. <laughs> so, I mean, you have to clean out your pet's dish, but little things like that, even your, your coffee maker with the little, the Keurig, yeah. it has a potential, your diffusers, if you don't use them enough, all those little things, 80s love indoor areas. So even indoors, you can have breeding sources that are kind of lurking around. Um, my mother, when I gave her <laughs> flowers for Mother's Day, she still had them in there in the vase and they were breeding in her own house. So now that we have 80s pretty much all around uh, LA County, Riverside, Orange County, San Diego, they're everywhere now. We really have to think kind of outside the box when it comes to breeding sources. Right. And I think that's or outside the container. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really important too. Like you said, checking inside our homes as well, because that's something I think we tend to forget, especially if we have indoor plants like lucky bamboo, lucky bamboos are like magnets for, for mosquitoes. So it's important to make sure that we're staying on top of that. Um, that'll lead me to my final thing that I've been asking everyone on our videos. And this one's for you, Heather. Um, what is your, in your experience in working and learning about mosquitoes, what has been uh, the most interesting fact or what has surprised you the most about uh, mosquitoes or mosquito control? I, when I started learning more about mosquitoes, they're these prehistoric phenomenons to me. They're these little tiny flying insects that no one really thinks about, but inside they have the capability to transmit diseases, which is incredible that they have 
the capability to do that. Their spit is what fascinates me. Their saliva can numb and thin blood. Is to have that little tiny insect have the capability to do that is absolutely amazing to me. And the fact that they have six mouth parts. Six. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> so, I mean, there's so many other different things. They have three stomachs. A lot of people don't know that. Um, all these like little tiny things that they have inside to become the most dangerous animal in the world. I mean, that's kind of a big deal when you're the most dangerous animal in the world, right, Ada? I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> that's really being so small. Exactly. I feel the same way, constantly fascinated by, by these mosquitoes. And they, they do really good at what they do, and that's surviving. And if we can try to put a hold on that and reduce that population as much as we can, it can really make a big effect and difference uh, in the mosquito population and the vector-borne diseases uh, that they can spread. Um, Heather, thank you again so much for joining us today as part of our last installment of Mosquito Bites Live as part of National Mosquito Week. Uh, very appreciative of your time. Uh, and again, thank you so much for having been a part of this conversation. Oh, of course. Thanks for having us and uh, get ready for the biting summer. <laughs> I'm excited about the next couple of days for National Mosquito Awareness Week. And I look forward to seeing everyone else's uh, fun things that they have available. Definitely. Again, Heather, thank you so much. And again, I want to give a big thank you to all the other agencies and people who have joined us uh, for Mosquito Bites Live, not only our viewers, but also uh, Andy Lima, uh, aka MC Bugsy, who joined us on Monday with a great conversation. Michael from uh, 305 Mosquito, all the way from Florida. Nicole from, Vector, uh, from Puerto Rico Vector Control, a great conversation we were able to do in Spanish. And Heather, thank you again for joining us uh, in Orange County uh, for this great conversation on how we work together and what people can do to protect themselves from mosquitoes. And um, Ada will definitely be thriving if we don't eliminate any sources. Uh, thank you to everyone who has joined us. This has been a great experience. Keep looking for more content that we'll be posting um, until the end of National Mosquito Week. And uh, thank you again for everyone. And Heather, I really appreciate your time again. Oh, thank you so much. I'll see you around. Bye, Ada. I, I hope not to see you around. <laughs> looking at you. <ya. laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>